A friend of mine wears an engraved ring that says, if God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. She's lived that truth and so has my guest. Louise Maxwell is here from London, Ontario. For a woman who spent almost a decade in and out of hospital for up to six months in a single year, Louise, you have lived a lot of places. I said, you're going to have to help me track your, your globe trotting. This story really begins in Saudi Arabia. It does, yes. With a motor vehicle accident. A car mishap uh, in the desert. Your husband was working there, obviously. He was working there, and uh, actually I was to work there too, but um, uh, I didn't. And um, I had a child born there. And um, Your second child was just four months old? Was just four months old. And when this uh, uh, car mishap happened, it's, it really started a, a domino effect, a never-ending domino effect that couldn't be stopped and um, it was uh, you know um, hospital after hospital surgery after surgery and so many complications every surgery had a complication how many spinal fusions did I you I had have? four and they all fusions. did they all come on unfused yes except for the last one hmm. just yes it. it's it's um distressing to read about <laughs> it, it I can't imagine being in it oh, one full year on your back it, it was awful especially having a small child and uh, when I uh, it took me about a year to get upright I would get upright maybe for a half a day a day and uh, I would sink to the floor and uh, it took about a year to be able to get upright to make it home and um, when I did make it home, uh, I had surgery. Um, I was home for six months, went back again because my husband was still there. And went back to Saudi Arabia. Yes, and then my fusion came apart oh, when I was oh. there um, because of some little complication that happened um, also uh, in hospital. So, um, so then again, I had to make the trip once more, and it's, it was something like a 34-hour, uh, you know, plane by ride. the plane ride mm -hmm. by the time from point A to point B. And uh, it, it just seemed that I could never, uh, like all the doctors would say, this surgery is going to fix you up. You'll be able to walk again. And every time there was a bigger and bigger complication until one time uh, I almost lost my life um, during one of the surgeries. Now, while all this was going on, I had the spiritual side going on, people hanging on to me, people giving me Bibles. Um, it was just incredible what was happening. God was uh, trying to get into the story. He was trying to get in, and, and I was... Uh, you know, I, I I was kind of losing my faith because I thought God must not love me. Uh, everybody has surgery like this. Why are all these things happening to me when I waited so long to have a second child that came much later? And you couldn't now care for that child. I couldn't even lift him. And um, I had uh, I had. Christian doctors, I had Christian nurses giving me Bibles in, in the hospital. I had one nurse that came before one of my surgeries and she brought the Bible and she says, you should read this. And we became friends later. And uh, she said, I always, God uses me in that room where you were in. It's always that room. The pre-surgery. Yes. And, um, but all along, uh, you know, I wanted to believe, I didn't want to believe <laughs> because so many things were, were uh, happening to me. And I kept hearing this li little voice uh, in my spirit saying to me, be still, be still and know that I am God. That was like a repetitive um, message. scripture message. Uh, and the, the other one that uh, kept going round and round in my mind, because I was reading the Bible all along, um, 
and uh, it uh, the message of that I was saying to God, why you must not love me because all this is happening. And I was remembering the lines, my ways are not your ways. Mm -hmm. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Just like heaven is higher than the earth, so too are my ways and my thoughts higher than yours. So, so don't give up yet. Right. So